A lot to get to on today's 49ers report by Chat Sports. I am your host, Chase Sr. Jason Verrett confirmed torn ACL. Raheem Mostert is going to be out for an extended period of time because of the knee injury he suffered against the Lions. Also, some Monday overreactions coming your way. But first, the 49ers report is made possible today thanks to our friends at Magic Spoon. This is cereal that is tasty and also healthy. You can get $5 off your checkout by going to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report. That link is in the description of the this video. Kyle Shanahan met with the media the day after the 49ers defeated the Detroit Lions to kick off the 2021 NFL season and our worst fears have come true. Cornerback Jason Verrett has suffered a torn ACL. That news made official today. Suffered that injury against the Lions on a non-contact play in the second half. Tried to walk off the field, go to the locker room under his own power. Was unable to do so. Had to be carted to the locker room. We knew at that point it was not good news. Really unfortunate for him because he suffered a bevy of injuries throughout his NFL career. So now you're looking at what was an already thin defensive back depth chart for the Niners becoming more thin. Your starters, when everybody is healthy as of right now, Emmanuel Mosley, Jaquaski Tart, Jimmy Ward, Diamador Lenore, you have Kaywan Williams, who can play a little slot, Tavon Wilson, Talanoa Hufonga. The Josh Norman signing becomes very, very important. I thought Dante Johnson got cooked yesterday in coverage, wasn't good at all, and Ambry Thomas is still very, very raw. This injury news for Jason Verrett has hit this organization hard because coming out of of TCU, first round pick. His career got off to a wonderful start. Then he dealt with a variety of injuries, a torn ACL earlier in his career. Now he suffers another one. And this is a guy whose career kind of rerouted because of he was plagued by injuries. But the last couple of years, last year especially with the Niners, he was able to reclaim his career to a certain degree, prove that when he's healthy, he can be one of the top cornerbacks in the league. But in game one, the season opener, he suffers a season-ending injury. After the game, Kyle Shanahan had some wonderful things to say about JV. He said this, quote, it's crushing. I'm hoping for the best. It's just crushing. The bad luck he's had putting together the last two years staying healthy how good of a camp he had got a lot of love for JV I have as much respect as anybody uh, for him that I have been around one of the positive developments coming out of the Lions win as the 49ers able to escape Detroit with a win after blowing that 38-10 lead in that second half is how Diamador Lenore played. He was targeted three times, only gave up one catch. He played an NFL high, not a 49ers high, an NFL high 90 snaps in his first ever career game as a pro, leading every defender across the National Football League, and I thought Diamador Lenore, the fifth-round pick out of Oregon, held up very well in coverage. He's going to be asked to do a lot with Jason Verrett now being lost for the season. Of course, because Verrett has gone down and the Niners' secondary is somewhat thin, we are talking about some Richard Sherman rumors because there have been some rumors, there's been some chatter about Sherman coming back to San Francisco. He's currently without a team. He is currently a free agent, still dealing with some of the legal issues that surfaced a couple months ago, but Kyle Shanahan did talk about Richard Sherman after that Lions game, saying, yeah, we've discussed bringing him back, and I've talked to Richard Sherman about it. Richard Sherman is always a possibility. So inside the facility in Santa Clara, this has been a topic of conversation, and now it's more of a topic of conversation because of the injuries going on in the secondary. I think Richard Sherman can still play. Yes, he's dealt with injuries as he's gotten older. He's still in his early 30s, but this is a multi-time All-Pro, a former Pro Bowler, a guy who in 2019 made it to the Pro Bowl and was excellent. And in that season, helping lead the Niners secondary to a Super Bowl defeat against the Chiefs, he was very, very good. I'm not saying he can play at this level, but can he play to some level of this level? 61 tackles, two tackles for loss, 11 pass breakups is an elite number, and three interceptions. He might not be the shutdown cornerback that he was once in his prime, but is he a better option than a Dante Johnson or a Josh Norman? My answer to that 
would be yes. And because of that, and because of the injury issues going down right now, as we continue to talk about injury issues with this franchise, I am all in in bringing Richard Sherman back. I think he can still play. He can be a good debt piece at the minimum. He could be a fantastic developmental coach out there for the young pieces in a Lenore, as well as an Ambry Thomas. I think the Niners should bring him in, and I think potentially it's only a matter of time before that happens. Niner gang, your opportunity to voice your opinions. Do you want the Niners to bring back Richard Sherman? If you do, hit that thumbs up icon and like this video. That's what I'm going to do when, when this video is made official. This is why you subscribe to the 49ers Report by Chat Sports because when breaking news like this happens, when alerts do surface, we have you covered within minutes of that news becoming official. Hit that red subscribe button down below or go to youtube.com slash 49ers TV. We just surpassed 39,000 subscribers. Let's get the 40K ASAP. The Jason Verrett injury news, not the only injury news that we're talking about after Kyle Shanahan met with the media. Raheem Moster, he's going to be going on IR. He's going to be lost for at least eight weeks, according to Kyle Shanahan in the first quarter against the Lions. He chipped off a piece of knee cartilage, which sounds really painful, and I didn't even know this was possible. Moster. Like Verrett, another player throughout his NFL career who's dealt with a plethora of injuries, and now he's dealing with another one. Kyle Shanahan also did say during this snippet that Trey Sermon is now going to be active in Week 2 against the Philadelphia Eagles after he was a surprise healthy scratch against the Lions to kick off the season. In his place of Raheem Mostert and Trey Sermon, who shined? The sixth-round pick out of Louisiana, Elijah Mitchell, who was absolutely fabulous against the Lions. And I understand the Lions are an awful football team, so take it all with a grain of salt when we're talking about the Niners' Week 1 performance. But for a rookie in his first career game, like D'Amador Lenore, to show up and show out, I was impressed. Mitchell, 19 carries, 104 yards, one touchdown, and the lone tutty, a 39-yard touchdown run to the crib. Josh Dubow put out a very, very interesting tweet saying this about Mitchell because what he did was to historic proportions. 49ers six-round pick Elijah Mitchell is the first rookie since the merger drafted in round four or later to rush for 100 plus yards in a season opener. The previous high was 96 for six-rounder Alfred Morris in 2012 when he played for Washington. Under who? Kyle Shanahan as his offensive coordinator and Kurt current 49ers running back coach Bobby Turner, who's one of the best RB coaches in the National Football League. So without Mostert, with how Mitchell played, and Jamichael Hasty, who was really good and had a touchdown run for himself, what's your level of confidence in the Niners running backs going into week two against an Eagles team that really surprised a lot of people with a win on the road against the Falcons? Scale it for me from one to ten. One being, I'm not confident at all. Ten being, I'm very confident. When you have Bobby Turner and Kyle Shanahan, they're both magicians working with running backs. I have no problem with this running back room. As I mentioned off the top, today's 49ers report is made possible thanks to our friends at Magic Spoon. Per serving of this delicious and healthy cereal, it's, you get under 200 calories per bowl, 13 to 14 grams of protein, 4 grams of net carbs, and here's the best thing, 0 grams of sugar. So basically, if you love cereal, the way it tastes, you like your morning routine like I do, and you like crushing a bowl of cereal before you go to work or before you work out, Magic Spoon is the answer because unlike like all of the other traditional popular brands that load up their sh uh, cereal brands with carbs and sugar. Magic Spoon doesn't do that. So one more time, head to magicspoon.com slash 49ers report. When you plug in that link, you get $5 off your purchase. It's an absolute no-brainer. From injury news to little overreaction Monday. I'm excited to do this because I've never done this here on the channel because, shoot, I started at Chat Sports in March and haven't been a part of a football season here at the company. So let's get to overreaction Monday. The big overreaction after the Niners almost blew that 38-10 to lead is that this defense sucks. They're trash. I'm concerned about it. That's what people are saying. I'm telling all of y'all to pump the brakes a little bit. Of course, when you go up against a Lions team that's inept and you almost blow a 38-10 to lead, 
and then that game comes down to basically the final plays, of course you have to have a little bit of a concern, but it's week one, and this unit really didn't play much at all in the preseason. And when you look at the defensive line pressures against the Lions, check out the total number at the top of the screen. This 49ers defensive line against Jared Goff and this Lions offensive line, which Lions fans were chirping at me saying, you don't know what you're talking about. This Lions offensive line is a strength. Oh, yeah? Niners defensive line had their number and more. 30 total pressures against Jared Goff, led by Eric Armstead's nine, Contavious Street's five, Nick Bosa's five, D Ford's five, and Kevin Givens' two. As for the sacks, for the Niners defensive front against the Lions. Nick Bosa coming off the torn ACL looked really, really good. Such a positive sign for D'Amico Ryans' defense. He had a sack, so too did D. Ford coming off his neck and back injuries. Contavia Street also a sack as well. Also factor this in. It was D'Amico Ryan's first game as a defensive coordinator. Now, I do agree in saying this. The defense after Jason Verrett went down in that second half was bad, but the Niners had built up such an insurmountable lead, it seemed, at 38-10, to 10, that you have to actually look at the scheme that the Niners were deploying out there. When you're up by 28 points and you're dump trucking your opponent, you're playing a lot of prevent defense. What does that mean? Everybody plays way off the line of scrimmage so that all of the passes in front of you, all of the runs in front of you, happen in front of you to limit the big play. Some of the concerns that I did see from this Niners defense against Detroit, it's how the Lions were able to run the football. And looking ahead to week two, that's the Philadelphia Eagles bread and butter with one of the best offensive lines in the league when they're healthy. Lions has a squad, 24 totes, 116 yards for an average yards per pop of a little less than five. And the running back catches out of the backfield. The Lions identified a mismatch there. They identified a weakness on that Niners defense, and they were able to throw a lot of screens that led to big plays. But again, when you're playing prevent defense to limit the offense taking it over the top, some of those screen passes are going to go for large amounts of yards. I'm not too concerned about the Niners defense. I think this unit is a strength, but what do you think? This is your opportunity to let me know in the comment section. Are you concerned about the Niners defense? Type Y for yes or type N for no. Next overreaction, Kyle Shanahan, overrated as a head coach. Kyle Shanahan is a choke artist. Now, a lot of people are saying this because when you look at Kyle Shanahan's resume, some choke jobs have happened. But Kyle Shanahan is a wizard of an offensive mind, and I thought he called an excellent game against the Lions, which we'll get to here in just a bit. But you look back at the Super Bowl. When the Falcons lost that 28-3 lead against the Patriots, who was the offensive coordinator? It was Kyle Shanahan. Some people put the blame on him as to why Atlanta faltered down the stretch. And then when Kyle Shanahan was the head coach of the Niners back in 2019 in the Super Bowl against the Chiefs, the 49ers had a 21-10 lead going into the fourth quarter. What happened? Chiefs came back. I think that was more of a product of the Chiefs just being an elite offensive unit as compared to the 49ers being inept at the head coaching spot. Going back to Shanahan against the Lions in the run game, in the pass game, play design, play schemes, putting in Trey Lance at certain situations, I thought Kyle Shanahan was in his bag. But there is one thing I want to see Kyle Shanahan work on, and this goes back to those Super Bowl losses. Keep the damn pedal to the metal and step on the opponent's throats and stay there. Do not let up, do not give up, and do not get complacent. Continue to run up the scoreboard. I hate these unwritten rules of you have to show respect to your opponent. Don't run up the scoreboard. Well, when you almost blow a 38-10 to lead in the season opener against a bad football team, when you've been an offensive coordinator and a head coach for two teams that almost blew and did blow Super Bowl leads, excuse me, you have to learn from your lessons. And you have to learn from your failures and your past experiences. And Kyle Shanahan, in his post-game press conference yesterday, did admit, yeah, we let up a little bit. Well, Kyle, you can't do that any longer. Niner gang, let me know. Were you annoyed by Shanahan on Sunday with the way that he coached the game and approached it 
in game with his decision making. Type A for, yeah, I'm annoyed, Chase. Type G for, he's a great coach. I'm going G for great coach because Kyle Shanahan, one of the best offensive minds in the league. Another overreaction. Maybe it's not an overreaction, actually. Where was Brandon Ayuk? Trent Sherfield had a big day, which was great, by the way. But where was Brandon Ayuk? Yeah, I mean, Brandon Ayuk was kind of in the witness protection program. A lot of interesting things coming out about Brandon Ayuk. Now, he did deal with a hamstring issue in training camp, which is a big reason why he didn't get a ton of playing time yesterday. But also, looks as though Kyle Shanahan is in favor of Trent Sherfield right now over Brandon Ayuk because Kyle Shanahan said this. We started Trent Sherfield. They've been rotating a lot throughout the preseason, but Ayuk has only been back for a week after he tweaked his hamstring, and we want to be smart with that. Here's the most important thing to note, though, of Shanahan saying. Also, Trent Sherfield has earned the right to be out there more. Brandon Ayuk yesterday, he only played 47% of the snaps, zero targets from Jimmy Garoppolo. I think that's of note. I've been on the record saying, Ayuk, he's a baller. Last year, led the Niners in receiving. He showed so many flashes as a rookie. A steal with where the Niners got him in the first round two years ago, in my opinion. I think he has 1,000-yard potential. But Matt Mayoko of NBC Sports Bay Area said, Brandon Ayuk's still learning to be a pro. So is he immature? Is he not getting acclimated with the NFL game? Is he not taking his craft, practice, and approaching the games in a serious manner? That's what a quote like that and a report like that kind of indicates to me. So in that fashion, I am a little bit concerned. And honestly, he's hopping on the PJ to go to Detroit, and he's handing off his PlayStation. I mean... I don't know. I'm not a big video game guy, and I'm not ripping on people who play video games, but when I'm getting ready for an NFL game or I'm getting ready for work, I'm not bringing my PlayStation on a road trip. That's for damn sure. So, Ayuk, if you got to mature, mature, because you have all-world potential, and your potential is absolutely unlimited. Another reminder, y'all, subscribe to the 49ers Report. Who is doing what we're doing here on the channel? First of all, largest 49ers channel on YouTube. We hit you with the latest news and rumors. When breaking news happens, we have you covered. Did you join us for our watch party for 49ers Lions on Sunday? 60,000 people joined us throughout the afternoon. Here's the good news. We're doing it again for week two against Philly. Hit that red subscribe button down below for the best 49ers coverage right here on YouTube.